Good morning, folks. Uh, this coming Sunday is the second Sunday of Easter, otherwise known as Divine Mercy Sunday. And perhaps a good place to begin is with the last verse of the uh, responsorial psalm. And it says the following uh, in relationship to the risen Christ. It says, The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. And of course, as you know, uh, Easter is not just celebrated one day, rather it's a whole season. So uh, we'll be hearing different aspects, different aspects of, of, of the Easter mystery. We'll be reflecting upon them for, for several, several, several weeks to come. But uh, as I perhaps already mentioned, um, uh, nobody, there was nobody present when Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, what we have in the, in, the, in the Gospels is we have, uh, we have uh, an empty tomb story, which uh, was read last Sunday, uh, this past Sunday, Easter Sunday at Mass, where Peter and James came to the tomb and found the body of Jesus uh, had, already, had already been taken. And uh, so uh, that's sort of ev evidence of the fact, I suppose, that, that he had risen. But then you have uh, what we call uh, uh, resurrection stories or, or appearance stories, where, where the resurrected one appeared to individuals, and uh, initially, for whatever reason, they didn't rec they didn't recognize him. And usually, it was because they, they were able to see the, the nail marks in his hands um, and his feet that they, they actually knew, knew who he was. Anyway, this coming this uh, this Sunday again. We have the encounter with, with, with the risen Lord, and uh, we find uh, on, this, on this occasion it's with uh, all, all of the immediate disciples, and uh, it says that they're they are uh, they're in a room. The doors are locked uh, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, and probably rightly so. It, it had to be a very very uh, scary time for them because. Their fear was that what happened, what happened to Jesus might, might obviously happen to them also, and so they, they disappeared or hid or they made themselves made themselves really scared. So on this occasion, we find that they're all together, uh, locked, locked, uh, locked in a room, and um, the risen, the risen Christ is, is not, is not uh, held back by by doors or, or uh, time right now that he sort of. Uh, uh, he's sort of uh, outside, outside of the confines of time, and so he, he, he all of a sudden he, he appears, he appears, he appears in their midst, and uh, his initial greeting to them, and it's the Easter greeting, was peace, peace be with you, and uh, then he showed them, he showed them his hands on his side, meaning of course that in showing them his hands on his side, they, they, they were able to recognize that. Um, that uh, even though he, he was alive, he, he was the one. He was the one who had, who had already been, who had already been, uh, had put, put to death by, uh, by uh, very challenging and difficult means. And he, anyway, on this occasion, we're told that uh, after after he greeted them, then he said, uh, he said, receive. He gave them the gift of confirmation. I suppose we call it confirmation, where he says he breathed on them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. So, so with that event, with that confirmation event, uh, it was certainly uh, for 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 the disciples. It it, it was for them a, a, a renew, not just a renewal of their faith, but also a renewal, a renewal, a renewal of their courage. Now, on on uh, that occasion, we're told that that uh, one of them, Thomas, was missing, uh, and. Uh, when the when the others told him that they'd seen the Lord, uh, in, uh, he he just wouldn't he wouldn't accept the fact that uh, that he, the Lord that, he, that the Lord could possibly have have, have been with them. Uh, he says unless unless I'm able to put my my uh, hands into into my fingers into the into the nail into the nail marks in, in his hand and, and his side, unless he can do that, I just I, I will not believe. And and then the the concluding part of that story, of course, is that uh, a week later that that uh, Jesus did the risen Lord did uh, reappear and uh, in this instance to Simon and and he told he told Simon he said he says. Um, 
he says, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. And we know what the response of, uh, of uh, Thomas was on that occasion. And it was a tremendous act of faith. His response was, my Lord, my, my, my Lord and my God. And sometimes Thomas uh, had got a very bad reputation for being a doubter. And, uh, but, but in essence, uh, uh, you could see why why he was. He, uh, Thomas was obviously a very heady kind of individual because several occasions he asked good questions of Jesus that are, that are recorded elsewhere. So he he wasn't somebody who took things for granted without he, he needed he needed evidence. And uh, so whether he got whether he deserved the bad reputation or not, uh, he got the answer he, he was looking for. And, and for him, he, he was totally he was totally satisfied. Whereby he was able to make that tremendous tremendous affirmation of faith when he said my Lord and my God. So then just a, a word on the, uh, the the first reading which is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. So uh, Acts of the Apostles as you know is like the volume two of, of Luke's Gospel and uh, the Acts of the Apostles is really the story the story of, of the birth and the, and the growth of, of the of the infant church. So starting with you know um, Jesus says to, to the apostles, and, you know, uh, it's not recorded here elsewhere. He says, "You are to be you are to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and, and until the ends of the earth." In other words, now that he's gone, that he's he, he's leaving them and returning uh, returning to, to heaven, uh, they are to be they are they are the church, uh, and their job is to is to make Christ's presence. Uh, might make Christ pre present in the world, and of course that's exactly what they did. And so, so we're in chapter. Sunday's uh, first reading is from chapter two of the Acts of the Apostles, and this is what it said. It said, it says with regard to the early the, the Christians, it says that they devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and prayer. So, in, in essence, I think what that uh, very brief little passage is telling us is that the apostles. Uh, were really doing their job and doing it well, but because of them, the church was active and and alive. And of course, um, uh, we'll hear more about that. You know, on subsequent Sundays we'll hear uh, we'll hear other parts of the Acts of the Apostles. But it's nice to know that uh, at the beginning that it started off it started off strong because it says actually at the end at the end of the of the, the, the reading. Uh, of chapter two, I think it says that on the first day, second day, that three hundred, three thousand members were, were were added to the church. So, it's a what you, what you call a very healthy, a very healthy beginning. But we'll hear more about that in the future. So have a good day and God bless.